All right, welcome to today's lesson on using files in the Swing environment. Uh, we're going to start by taking a look at the J File Chooser class and how to use that to access files in our programs. And then we'll finish up by taking a look at how to import images into the programs that we're creating. So the J File Chooser class is basically a class that's used to make a dialog box either for saving or loading files into a program. Um, it's very user friendly, it looks like the typical dialog box you see in most programs where you have uh, a window at the top that allows you to access the files, a little text box at the bottom where you can type in a file name, a save button or a load button, and a cancel button. And now whether you want to save or load a file, you're going to use a different method from this class. So if you want to save a file, you need to use the show save dialog method from the JFile Chooser class. If you want to load a file, you have to use the show open dialog from the JFile Chooser class. Now these two methods basically work exactly the same. Um, the only difference between them is really going to be aesthetically how they appear on the screen, whether you have a load button or you have a save button. So for argument's sake, we're going to talk about how to use the show save dialog method and then realize that this will also apply for the show open dialog method as well. So the first thing we're going to look at is the argument that's required for these, uh, these methods. And this argument requires a component to be present. And this is the component that your J file chooser will be attached to. So what this means is when your, your dialog is going to pop up on the screen, it will show up over top of whatever component you've put here in the arguments. Okay. Um, now, whatever frame that component is attached to, when you interact with that frame as a user, it will cause those interactions to occur to the J file chooser as well. So, for example, if you minimize that frame, the file chooser will minimize with it. If you want your file chooser to be uh, independent of your overall program, you can also put null inside these brackets, and then that makes that completely independent so that if you minimize or close your program, the file chooser will still stay up on the screen. The second thing you need to realize is the return type here is an integer value. It's not an actual file. So what this method does is it returns the integer that indicates whether or not the user was successful in selecting a file. And there are three integer options that it can return. It's going to either be approve option, cancel option, or error option. And these are all um, constant integers that are a part of the jfilechooser class. Uh, so when you access them, you can just say jfilechooser dot approve option or cancel option and so on. The approve option is returned when the user is successfully able to select a file. Cancel option is returned when they cancel or click the cancel button without choosing a file. And the error option is occurred when they can't select a file properly but they also haven't canceled. So some sort of error like uh, the file is not found or something has been corrupted or whatever. When that error happens, it returns the error option. Now once you've uh, actively been able to get an, uh, an actual file that has been selected, so they had the, the um, approve option selected here, you're going to get access to the file by using the get selected file method. And this is what's going to return the file object itself. Once you've saved that into a file object, you can then perform any file method that we've seen from our previous lesson. You can convert it into a scanner so you can access it, whatever it is that you need to do. So we'll take a look at, at how that looks in um, a program. So here you see a file chooser program that I have. Uh, the first part here is just a basic uh, swing out uh, program here. I've got a main frame, I've got my contents pane, and I've also here made my file chooser object. Okay. All I've done here is just pack it, make it visible, so that really what's going to show up is just a tiny little window at the top with my file chooser over top. So think of this as being when I load my program for the first time. Uh, maybe I have a file chooser that allows you to load a file that you're going to use in that program. So the first thing I do here is I make my file chooser. I show the uh, open dialog in my contents, attached to my contents pane. And once they've successfully selected a, uh, a file, I'm going to store the integer value inside file selected. So that if file selected is the approve option, I can come in and do something with that file. And if not, I can do something else. So if they've actually been able to select a file, it's going to get that file using the get selected file method from my file chooser. And then I'm going to use my try catch method to attach it to a scanner and output whatever is inside that file. So if we run this, 
you can see here's my file chooser object that looks like a typical file chooser and there's the the class that the method that came up over top and you can see there isn't much here and this was actually placed over top at the beginning so if I go through to find my file that I want to open so I'll just go and open uh, a file that I created earlier it's called file.txt because I'm very original that way and oh field.exe there you go all it had inside it was the word field and the outputs okay so the second thing we want to talk about was how to use images. So there are several ways we can deal with images. The way that we're going to do it in this course is by creating an image component that is going to extend the J component class, just like all the other components that we've been creating on our own. When we do this, we can load an image from either a JPEG, a GIF, or a ping file and store it as an image icon. We can then take that image icon object and access the actual picture or the image itself by using the get image method of the image icon class and this will return the actual individual picture. We can display it by overriding the paint component method of J component and calling the draw image method from the graphics class that requires an image to be drawn. So I'll show you what that looks like in the second example here. So I have the image component extending J component and I have my attribute of an image icon. The constructor is going to allow me to access a file. So in this case, I have a file called burns.jpg. You could use a file selector here, or a J chooser, color chooser, or J file chooser here if you wanted to to get your file. Um, and once I've done that, I'm then going to set the preferred size of my component based on the size of that image. So that image, I'm going to use its get image to figure out what the picture is and get the size, the width, and the height of that image that I can then use to set the preferred size of that component. When I go to the paint component method, I create my image object by using, again, the get image of my image icon that I had up here, and then the draw image from my graphics class that requires that image file, and then this sort of says where in the component do I want to draw my image. Uh, this is an, an image observer. We don't really need it. What this, this does here is allows me to um, has an, that, that will work if my image is loading like from the internet or something but because we're going to be using files that are on our computer we don't need to worry about having an image observer so we just put a null in here okay uh, I've got a main method down here that basically just makes my image component adds it to my panel and displays it so if we again run this particular class here there you can see there's my burns image that has popped up and my component is the same size as the image itself okay this brings up one last thing that we can do is by doing animation using images. So we saw before when we were doing animations, we were redrawing pictures over and over again. We can do the same thing um, here, whereas instead of drawing them, we can actually just display a bunch of images that are fairly similar. It looks like an animation. So you can do this by having an array of image files, and then all you have to do is switch between which file in that array you want to display at a time. And you could do that inside of a thread if you wanted to. So it's just another option for you now that you know how to import an image. It's just the idea of show this image, now show the next one, now show the next one, and so on. You may want to put a sleep method in there just like we did before so you have a pause so you can see each, each individual as, image as it, as it appears. Okay, that's it. That's all we got for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.